Hello, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book rant. Today, I'm going to be covering this book, Mad Kestrel. Now, the front cover still has the sticker on it from when Coaz Books labeled it. It had been sitting on the shelves since June 23rd of 2022. I picked this up in, I think, July, though maybe August of last year, 2022. It's one of those stickers that is really a pain in the butt to remove. As I'm removing it right now, it's leaving behind some of the residue. I'll clean that off later. I don't really need to keep this sticker on though, so it's a good time, as good a time as any to remove it. Now, this is a book of fantasy set in a swashbuckling narrative. The titular character, a Kestrel, is in a setting where the use of magic is heavily controlled by the government of the islands she resides in. And she is also a pirate, which makes her doubly criminal. And as a pirate, what she has been doing is working for a captain that was a tavern owner turned pirate. And so for three years, she has been serving as various roles on this ship. Generally, it is considered bad luck for women to be on the seas. And that plays into a lot of the character dynamics in this book. That's a superstition I know exists in the real world and existed in the real world, but it's also a major tradition in this story. Before we continue, a couple other things about this book. The cover art is by Shelley Wan, uh, W-A-N. I'm not sure how else to pronounce that. This book would have cost $15 new I instead bought it for $7, $6.98, so about half priced. The front cover has some praise from Ed Greenwood, who is the creator of the Forgotten Realms campaign setting for Dungeons and & Dragons, and also the author for a few books on my shelf behind me. These two books here are The Kingless Land and The Vacant Throne, both by Ed Greenwood. What he has to say about this book is fast-paced, stylish, and romantic. Kestrel is a heroine to root for who really comes alive. Long may she sail. This book is not new, but it's about 15 years old. It is copyright 2008, and according to this uh, information, I have a first edition copy, which was printed in March of 2008. Each chapter has a quote from the English poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Chapter 12, for example, opens up with this line, and I had done a hellish thing, and it would work em woe. Or consider chapter 24, fear at my heart as at a cup, my lifeblood seemed to sip. I don't think those lines have specific relevancy to things going on in the chapter. I may not have been paying enough attention to those lines when I was reading the book, though. They might have meaning, and I just glossed over that. The plot s starts moving because Kestrel's captain is captured by uh, the government and is effectively sentenced to death, a very rapid trial, everything so as to prevent him from getting justice. Kestrel has to sneak in and then rallies her old crew, who were already superstitious of her, of, of sailing with her, because she is a woman, and that was something that wasn't supposed to happen in this uh, setting, but even now she has it worse because now she's trying to lead them, and a lot of them, 
several members of her crew considered her to be just the younger lover of the captain, not really someone who should be feared and respected. She has several crew members, more than half of them really, that respect her for the job she does. But this is her first time taking the helm, so she has to struggle in that way. It was a interesting book because of that. She has to establish control and dominance in the uh, ship, and then also is trying to hunt down someone who has a very charismatic affect to him. Kestrel cannot get this man off of her mind and out of her head, but she's trying to capture this person who she believes got her captain in trouble with the law. As it turns out, there's a lot of moving parts. The person, the pirate that she thought was responsible, was actually working with her captain and the law, part of the law, caught up to them at the wrong place and at the wrong time. But they have the legal authority of the king, but in an under-the-table sort of way. And so they are able to use and exercise the king's will on the sea, but they are not able to be open about it. And that's something you eventually find out in the story, is that her captain has been doing all these seemingly shady things, and it's all in the service of the, the kingdom. And Kestrel thought that by going to sea, she was evading capture by the kingdom. As a mage in this setting, all mages are supposed to be under the control of the king, and specifically a uh, nationalized police force of magic users. What makes Kestrel especially unusual is that she seems to be able to use magic while at sea, and this is something really strange because according to common knowledge of all the magic users, Magic users don't work their trade, or rather, can't work their abilities off of dry land. Now, one, she lives in an archipelago, so the idea that mages can't easily do their magic and feel uneasy over open water makes it really hard to believe that they spread across this kingdom so easily, but... Kestrel is unique because she can use her magic when she's not on dry land. And she is trying to evade capture and the notice of the kingdom because of this ability of hers. And to find out that she's secretly been working for that kingdom all along feels kind of like she's betrayed by her captain. And her captain is one of the few people that she has trusted enough to tell that she is a magic user. And what she uses it for is to control the winds to make it easier for them to do their piracy. But she only uses her magic sparingly. And so the whole time she had been working for her captain, she thought, well, I'm doing this away from the king's prying eyes. And instead she finds out that king she was trying to avoid actually is her supervisor's supervisor. So, interesting moving pieces in this book, and it was not a hard read. There are only about 300 pages of content in this book, so you can read it comfortably in a couple days if you have the time for it. And I did, so I was able to read it during a couple days off, a weekend off. One of the things that pulled me in when I saw this on the shelf was this beautiful cover art. So the cover art by Shelley Wan was really effective at drawing me in. It's 
not the standard coloring for a book. A lot of the books on the shelves I see at used bookstores tend to be kind of blackish or grayish on the spine. And so this was kind of a mustardy gray in a way, but it was different enough that I pulled it off the shelf, looked at it and thought, okay, this cover is interesting. It's a female swashbuckling pirate with some people all around her. She's got her sword drawn and what looks like a pistol in her right hand. And she is standing, there's a cannon in frame. There's another ship in the distance and some people with their swords drawn clearly not getting with the program she is in charge but some people don't like that and so these different aspects of the cover art are really intriguing and so that's why i bought this book i bought it like i said for six dollars 98 cents before taxes and it was in my opinion, worth it. I think I may even have checked this book out if it were in the library before buying it new. I don't think I would have bought it full price, but if I had read it first, I would definitely be willing to look it up online and buy it for less than cover price. So it's good. I'm not saying go out and find it at your bookstore. I'm not sure you could find it at your bookstore, but if any of this content is intriguing to you, definitely check it out online, look it up, see if you can find a copy that is worth it, or look for it at a used bookstore, a secondhand bookstore, or a library's surplus uh, shop. So all in all, it was a fun book, and I think if any of this has sounded interesting and You've heard some of my other opinions on fantasy novels and the kinds of fantasy that I read, then this book is going to be good for you. Misty Massey did a wonderful job with this book, and I hope to find more of her works on the bookshelves. My name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book rant.